Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we're going to be looking together at a couple of methods to create gradient borders in CSS. Okay, so let's start from method number one. We can use the border image property to create a linear gradient. We can pass an angle and then we can pick two colors and save. Next, we have to specify the border width for example, six pixels, and then the border style, solid, and save. And as you can see, we have created uh, four uh, small squares in the corners of this element, and that's because we have to specify the border image slice property two, and set it equal to one. We can also just uh, remove this and, and pass this value one right after the linear gradient here. So this is the, uh, probably the easiest uh, and more uh, straightforward approach to creating uh, gradient borders. But there is a problem. If, for example, we were to apply a border radius of 0.4m, Actually, you can, uh, you can pick any value, and if you save, you'll notice that this border radius is not applied. And that's because border image is not compatible uh, with the border radius. So unlike uh, background image, where you can use the linear gradient and uh, the border radius is applied, with border image we cannot do that. So we have to come up with uh, a different approach. So let me show you method number two. So we can replace border image with the background. We can copy this linear gradient and paste it here. So now we are applying two linear gradients. Then you can specify the border color equal to transparent. And then you can replace this one here with padding box. And then this one with the border box. Now we have to change these values here. We are going to remove the angle and the colors and replace them with white for the first stop color and white for the second color. And that's it. Now, so now we have a gradient border and we are also applying a border radius. But what's happening here? So let me remove this for a second. So first we are creating uh, uh, simply a background linear gradient. On top of this, we are creating a second uh, linear gradient, which is a fake linear gradient because we're, we're using the same color, white, and we're using it twice. So we are creating a white background, but we are limiting the sides of this uh, white background to the padding box. So padding box here and border box are the values of the background clip property. So padding box means uh, uh, occupy all the area of the element except the borders. For example, if we replace white with red, you see that we are occupying this area here. So with this technique, you can uh, you can apply uh, you can have a gradient border, and you can also apply a border radius. But obviously, you have to set a uh, color for the background. So usually in Kodi Frame, we have a variable uh, color BG, so that you don't have to remember to manually change this color. This is going to be automatically updated according to the color of the of the section, according actually to the data theme of the section. And that's it. So you have a second technique. Now, some of you have been, uh, have been asking uh, after we posted this on Twitter, uh, how, how can you uh, actually apply a gradient border with a transparent background? And I really couldn't come up with any technique to do so. But by do after doing some more digging, I found this great technique uh, on dev.to by uh, Temani uh, Afif. And it's something really, really smart. So let me show you how this works. So it's, he's using um, a, a mask element uh, and he's compositing uh, the mask element to uh, actually clip just the border of the element. So in practice, uh, what he's doing is, uh, so he's applying a linear gradient to the element, but now he's using the mask element 
the mask image actual element to apply a linear gradient and now the colors don't really matter so let's go with white white limited to the padding box and now a second linear gradient white white and save next is using the mask uh, composite property with the value of exclude to select just the border. So what's happening here? So with, mask, uh, with masks in CSS, you can decide which parts of an element are visible and which parts are not. So a mask is, is, is a really advanced in, in the sense that you can uh, make compositing operations between different parts of the mask. So in this case, for example, imagine we are creating a first element whose size is equal to the padding box and once again is the whole size of the element except the border. So this white area here that we see inside our button and then is creating a second element whose size this time is equal to the whole element and with the mask composite is saying we want to remove the uh, this element here from the other one so similarly to what you would do in uh, graphic tools like Adobe Illustrator and Figma where you can remove some um, elements, some parts from uh, the one underneath, you can do the same with the uh, mask composite in CSS. And so we are applying, so th that's why you can see the linear gradient only applied to the border because it's actually the only part where the mask is not applied. But obviously when you do so, uh, you are hiding also the content of the button. So um, what he's doing uh, is, um, and he suggests that later on, right here, uh, is applying this um, this technique to an after, or actually to a before pseudo element. So if you go with before, you can have content, uh, and then uh, all this stuff goes here, right? Uh, and you should apply a position relative here, and then a position absolute here position absolute with a top zero, left zero, um, with 100% and uh, uh, height 100%. So we want the before pseudo element to have the same size of uh, the main element here. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, I would rather have the border property uh, defined here, so, so that if you want to modify these uh, um, easier uh, or maybe using utility classes you can do so while you can't really it's a, it's a little bit more difficult to interact with the before pseudo elements so let's add a six pixels solid transparent uh, transparent element here you can also uh, apply the border radius here of 0.4 m and uh, you have to go back here and just set a border equal to Inherit and do the same for the border radius equal to inherit and save. So apparently nothing is changing, but uh, uh, actually you uh, some some stuff has changed as we have just uh, explained. So now you can apply the border um, the border values to the main elements and also the border radius to the main element. And this, uh, the, this before pseudo element is going to inherit the changes that you apply to the main element. Now, the real advantage of this, this technique is that you can uh, change the background color of this element. For example, in Kodi frame, we have a background contrast higher utility class to uh, switch the color of the background. Um, as you can see right now, you have a transparent uh, background for the button. While with the, the technique we see, we have seen before, the one uh, which applies the background clip property, uh, you cannot really have a uh, transparent background. Now, if you're using uh, custom properties to change the value of the background, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, there is not gonna be a huge difference unless you are using uh, a, uh, a background images for the section. So imagine you have a background image here. Uh, obviously, if you have a transparent fill for the button, you can see through the button and you would see the background image. While if you're using, if you were using technique number two, 
with the, the background clip, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be possible to see through the button. You would still see the background color here. Okay, so that's all for this uh, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching.